Go ahead. So I'm going to introduce um, the panelists that we have. Starting on the right, you have Vicky, who opened the show this morning, so you're very familiar with her by now. Um, and then next to Vicky, we have Nicola. Nicola Thomas is an NMV pioneer. Yes. Indeed. He's got the arrows on the back to show it from Fortinet. Um, up next, we have James Buchanan, who's the GM of the Edge uh, Solutions over at Edge Cloud, over at Adva. And we have San Sandeep Habani, who's engineering manager for Backbone Engineering at Facebook. And then next to him, we have a gentleman, Matt George, uh, from Aquinix. And we have Mansour, uh, and Mansour is from Ofcom. So he regulates the industry, among other things. But the CTO, so I think we're good with that. And once uh, Stein gets uh, mic'd up, he'll be joining us shortly. He is managing director of the Dutch Data Center Association. So this morning, we are talking about corporation. And, um, and there's a quote here, I'll read it. Um, maybe a little cheesy, but it says, no one can whistle a symphony. I can't even whistle. It takes a whole orchestra to play it. So, and we heard this morning in Vicky's speech that the reality is that it takes cooperation, right? This is not something that we can do alone. This is not something that we should do alone. So maybe let's start off with Vicky, your thoughts about cooperation and ecosystems and the role of standards and the like play. Well, you know, I think we're all in business to make money, right? right. Um, and so I, I, cooperation doesn't have to mean you have to move where the money goes, <laughs> it, but, it, it, but it means we have to work together in order to realize and monetize the potential of the solution set. Um, and and I, at Verizon, we've built our solution stack for SDN based on an ecosystem of partners, and not everyone has chosen to do that, um, but we chose to do that because we felt we could get the best innovation at the fastest pace by doing that. And if we tried to do it all in-house, uh, we couldn't get there as quickly and we couldn't satisfy customer requirements as quickly. We also learned during the process that customers care about strong brands together. And uh, it, feel, it, it gives them a sense that as they make their digital transformation journeys, if there are other strong brands in the boat with them, uh, then they're there with them for the long haul in the long run. And so that was very important to us as we built out our ecosystem. We also know that you know, there's some spaces where we excel and we have endowments that are right for us to win in the business. And there are other places where others bring those to the table at a better pace or a better um, you know, core competency than we may have. And in order for us to move beyond being a service provider, because we don't call ourselves a service provider anymore. We haven't called ourselves that in, in many years, even though the industry might try to put labels on all of right. us. Um, but we really believe we provide a much stronger integration of solution sets and our core competency is that integration. Bringing multiple players together, uh, providing the glue that, that sticks them together, and that includes orchestrating end-to-end, -end, and as I mentioned before, really providing customers that closed-loop service assurance, which we think is extremely important. Um, but that's not easy to do. It takes an ecosystem of partners to do that. It takes um, some standards in order to provide things like the APIs in a way that we can deliver quickly versus everybody trying to invent them on their own. Um, but it doesn't mean that you know everyone adopts the standards so that we interconnect and lose our all of our own differentiation too. So I think it's a difficult and delicate line sometimes in terms of uh, what interconnecting means, and uh, we still have to be able to work together and provide solutions that work with one another, but still have that ability to customize so that we can differentiate. Perfect, thank you. Speaking of customization and work together, so we'll look at another service provider, so to speak, um, kind of, but not really a service provider. What's, what's your view, Sandeep, from the Facebook angle? I mean, does collaboration make sense? Does cooperation make sense? And does it make sense in a new generation of providers, so to speak, like Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, to a large extent, we are a service provider, at least to keep the site up and make the Facebook experience happen. No, uh, Facebook relies heavily on our ecosystem and our ecosystem partners enable us to be successful. Interestingly, I think uh, 
the ecosystem itself has been changing over the years with the SDN transformations. The vendor gears have become more extensible, programmable, all the way down to the chipsets. <laughs> and there is the white box play too. So we are also galvanizing that ecosystem to transform to the, to the new age networking solutions that we want to roll out. And we've always been open to new ecosystem play. Uh, we made an announcement a few months or a year back where we work with Arista, where they provided us a white box that we use in our data centers uh, for one of the aggregated router functions. And that was pretty amazing that you know, it takes uh, both sides to work on this new place and make it happen. Um, so yeah, I think the ecosystem is crucial for everybody, uh, regardless of who they are. Good, and Facebook certainly drives that, right? So I mean, white box is a way to potentially drive cooperation, potentially, maybe. But what's your view, Matt? And from the Equinix standpoint, you're kind of a service provider, a special case. Yeah, what, I suppose we would describe uh, Cooperation is interconnection. Um, the Equinix business, um, we have 200 plus uh, data centers located globally in uh, 52 metros, 24 countries, I think. Um, those facilities are all interconnected via our own uh, cloud fabric. And within those facilities, you know, enterprises deploy and, and run their digital businesses and interconnect with network providers, CDNs, you know, anybody that they need. So um, we, I suppose, facilitate cooperation, at, you know, at that base level. Um, and now what we're seeing is to sort of move away from, you know, not just physical deployments, but virtual deployments. We've just launched a branded, you know, VNF as a service. Yep. Um, and that itself, um, we don't provide that. That's provided by um, a selection of vendors. So we need cooperation to deliver new products to, to continually make us relevant to the market. But I suppose the core of our business is that we have vertical markets, ecosystems with partners, suppliers, vendors connecting together under our data center roofs. Got it. I'm going to go to Stein next, but before I'm going to just let James and Nicola know, I'm going to come back to the vendor viewpoint as to why it still makes sense to cooperate. But maybe Stein, as a data center operator, <coughs> kind of like, you know, what, what, what do you think? What are your thoughts around cooperation and uh, multiple multi vendors? Well, co cooperation is the, uh, the reason why data center ecosystems uh, uh, exist, why hubs exist in the world. And uh, especially here in the Netherlands, if you look at Amsterdam, it's, uh, it, it's all about collaboration. It's all about uh, being in the proximity of uh, all the services and providers uh, all around it. You see uh, 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 the campuses around it, like Hypercell campuses, regional campuses. Uh, it's all about uh, connecting uh, uh, towards uh, the new players, the new uh, cloud players, uh, uh, security providers. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, exchanges uh, from uh, all the types, uh, um, and but nowadays you see with the tremendous growth of the industry, you see also uh, very much cooperation about the outside world. We're to always talk about the digital world, but we're very much in now in cooperation with uh, governments, with local municipalities, because uh, we're growing in such a rate that uh, we need to place data centers at certain uh, location. We need to create new campuses, and mm -hmm. that needs cooperation with everybody. And we, I think, as an industry, need to realize that we're not in our digital bubble, but we're also uh, outside, and that's Fair. very important. Fair. So the ecosystem is not just the vendors and the technologies, but beyond that. And we'll come back to that mm -hmm. once or later, once we're done with the... All right, so, gentlemen, um, cooperation. You have products, specialized products in some cases. You compete, um, not directly, but with other vendors in the ecosystem. <coughs> and so when Vicky, when Sandeep, when Matt say, hey, look, you know, let's all come together, cooperate, open up your API so we can control you. What are your thoughts? Let's start with James. 
So uh, um, I think there's a, there's a lot of discussion around cooperation as if it's something sort of mysterious and, and ephemeral. So, I mean, what, what's going on with NFV? NFV is about disaggregation, right? Um, in the olden days, right, when you had the full stack providers, they would do this integration function top to bottom, and it was good work. They provided a lot of value, but the problem is they charge 60% gross margins on that value, and if you wanted to change at the top, you had to wait for the whole stack to come out again, and that didn't provide the operators with the speed to market that they needed. So they consciously, with the introduction of the NFE white paper, right, said, we've got to break this apart. Fine. So now you have to take the good with the bad. You said, right, um, full stack providers, we don't want the full stack anymore. We're going to take hardware from one player, applications from something else, and some middleware as a homologation layer. Um, but now they own the integration challenge. Right, and they can, they can get someone else to do it, they can get an SI to do it, they can pick one of the vendors to do it, or they can do it themselves. And across the market, different players have, have chosen different answers to this question. But that's what's going on, right, is, is that disaggregation, or sorry, the integration function has come out into the wild, and it's what the industry has to solve. And so, yeah, we have to work together. But, you know, money talks, and we all do our jobs. Yep, so what's, what's your take, Nicola? Will um, it be disaggregated? Uh, I, it is, okay. it is, and, yeah. and that's the key point, and the customization also. So, um, if, if you look back, uh, especially this industry, we cooperate, uh, that's the same internet over the planet. It's not happening out of the blue. Right. It, it's bringing by the standards, I'm also participating to the standards, uh, but at a very slow pace. Very, very slow. And uh, all, all those things accelerate, and uh, no um, uh, service providers like Verizon cannot just provide you one solution for one problem. Right. They need to customize, they need to adapt, they change happens, change is the only constant. So we need to adapt and cooperate. And, and everyone dreams about it because what's better than a league of experts working in harmony to, to provide, that's what you want. You want the best of everything and, and, and work in harmony. It's a good goal, and then you have the competition. Yes. The uh, everyone needs to get their share of that, etc. That that kicks in. Uh, but today, uh, everyone moved to that direction with uh, a lot of automation, and uh, and and we work with uh, almost everyone. If if you look from a pure security perspective, you have to secure something. You don't secure. Nothing. That, that, that doesn't make sense, and it's extremely expensive. So the best for us is to be able to uh, adapt in the orchestration to be able to secure the, the orchestration itself and the thing that is orchestrated. Uh, if we move away without blocking, but try to get along with and provide the best security, everyone well, works uh, well too. And automation allows to have a better security posture. Because security is, is it's like when you integrate sure. with NFVSDN, people really discover what it really means to be an integrator, and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, we can debate how much uh, the value, but it's not easy. It's not an easy job, and we need to make that easy job automated. So it's even more complicated. But the result is you can take a very complex problem, and thanks to automation, replicate that so the the, co the the value the cost of doing that for a dozen people mm -hmm. per people change dramatically sure. and then you can have a better posture from security which we love so i think <laughs> that's fair we'll come back to that point i think the cooperation through aps and automation will come back and look at maybe <laughs> whether that's the reality and uh, and, and that but maybe when so any thoughts about this whole cooperating is it always good um, I think it's, it's better sometimes than others. Yep. And I have lots of thoughts on this, so I could go on forever, but, uh, but I think it's interesting, the comments we heard, you know, we're in it for the money, somebody said. <laughs> yes. I think there's also an ethical aspect <laughs> as well, but you know, money is important. You said that it's all about uh, interconnection, which you would say that, wouldn't you? I but would. You yep. would. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think interconnection has always happened, interoperability has always happened, standards have always happened. So why are we all talking about collaboration why, why are things different? There's a few drivers for that. I think the first one is if you look at the huge diversity and complexity of solutions that are out there, part of that is driven by disaggregation, as James said. 
So you simply cannot use the old model of standards, interop, interconnect, and systematically test every combination. Mm -hmm. It's just not possible anymore. So operators and everybody else who's involved in this space knows we need to do things differently. And that's, I think, part of the reason why there's a big spur to different ways of collaboration, which you've seen springing up. The other thing is, I think there are times when, to your point, is it good or bad? There are times when industries collaborate a lot, right. and there's times when they kill each other. Right. So why? Why is that? I mean, here I think we're, we're in a particular status where the whole of the telecoms industry has got its eye on other people's business, basically, which is there's a universe that's expanding. Connectivity is a big opportunity for everybody in telecoms, so there's potentially an expanding universe, and therefore, to get a, to get a, you don't need to necessarily button down the hatches and, and keep yourself to yourself to get a part of that expanding universe. At the same time, I mentioned about the complexity and how difficult that is, so to get a part of that expanding universe, there's a need for greater collaboration. But the bottom line is still, it's a really tough competitive world out there. I think a lot of people focused here on the business side, which is slightly ahead of the consumer. The consumer world is savage, especially in Europe. Competition is rife. So we need to lower costs as well. So understanding what we can share right. as well as cooperate is a, is a key point. As right. well. So to that point, yes, <laughs> Matt, you had something. Yeah, I think picking up on that, I think what you sometimes miss, you have to look, I think Victoria was saying it earlier in her speech, about what, what's the actual business outcomes now in, in, in the world right. that we're at. And if we pick up the point, and let's, let's take the interconnection point a bit further, and not just a, a general term. You know, we get to talk to a number of our enterprise customers who are looking at different ways, different ways of working, different ways of delivering their solutions. So the OTT providers, for example, you know, traditionally they would have to go through a CDM provider, sign up to a long-term contract, they would have to use a network carrier. You know, they're looking at how can they do these things on demand when their business suits it. And these players are becoming big enough now to actually demand that for the industry to change, to change their business models. So um, we see that. We see it happening not just in businesses like broadcast. We see it happening in e-commerce, yep. where you're seeing transformation from traditional high street to the digital um, variety. And um, that's what's changing. And the business outcome is effectively what you and me want. We want services delivered good user experience when we want them. And I think that's going to drive companies to collaborate. But of course, we, we are all in it. There's a commercial right. side to it. There's always this. Um, but I think we should look at those business outcomes sometimes before the sort of technology, if that makes sense. I think that's, that's fair, right? I think we've all talked about business outcomes and, and that in many, many cases, you have to drive cooperation to do that. And the negotiation becomes the type of cooperation, right? So we've talked about, yeah, certainly cooperating is fine. But at the end of the day, is if a Fortinet, I mean, Adva less as a platform, but we'll, we'll start with, you know, have, we have one vendor that historically was integrated, um, so we'll, we'll go after you. Um, but still is. But, but, <laughs> but fundamentally, someone's coming to you and say, you know what, the customer is telling me, you know, Vicky's telling you that, Sandeep's telling you that, and, and actually Matt's telling you that. It wants me to create a marketplace, right? The, because so the end customer has a choice between Fortinet and pick your other favorite you know, security vendor. Um, from your standpoint, do you cooperate to a certain extent? Do you cooperate but hold out and hold some key aspect? You know, what are your thoughts on this, right? Cooperate fully or not? And how? You in that case um, that you describe marketplace and all that, it's uh, your base on the platform. Right. So in, the, in that case, and we're, we are in that platform and yes, that marketplace are, yeah. with my two neighbors, yes. um, <laughs> yeah. uh, then I, I cooperate fully with the platforms to get the, the best out of it. And, and on the network side, uh, commodity is not totally there yet. So you really need sure. to uh, have a full co collaboration to get the maximum out of the NICs. Um, technically, it's right. not that give me a nick and I have 100 gig, doesn't work that way yet. Right. Um, so we need to cooperate there. Uh, and then that opens up a market Correct. in which I compete with my competitors yeah, for, so, for the value I can bring. Well, I think that's, that's fair. So you, you, if you are confident in the solution, cooperating should not hurt you, strictly speaking, because in an open market with more markets, you, you should... To be very clear where you collaborate, yeah. 
to be in the platform and where you compete. Once right. you're in, you compete. Right. And so what we're saying is the corporation, the new world of corporation is such that it results in speaking of best of breed, right? The best of breed um, ecosystem, supposedly, right? It's supposed to do that. And therefore, everyone wins. Consumer wins. The best vendors win. The service provider wins. True or not? Uh, I yes, Mr. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a perfect world, well, right? We are, we are a competition regulator. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you are. I have yes. to remind you of that. So uh, I think there's a nuance, and so you're right to put the consumer and the citizen yeah. uh, first and say, what's, what's in it for them? Yeah. And there are many ways of collaboration that's good for the consumer, and you mentioned greater choice, and that's what we want in the UK in particular. There are some types of collaboration that will be bad for the consumer when you're actually limiting choice. So I, I would just remind everybody that it's really important that when you do configure these things, and especially industry-wide collaborations, that you take that into account. I know having participated in ecosystems such as TIP and OCP, yep. that at the beginning of every meeting, they almost recite like a sermon from the Bible of the antitrust laws, etc. But that is important. So the only reason we're doing that and making sure we're keeping a close eye on the collaboration is to make sure that it's in the interest of the citizens. Correct. Yep. So, yes, James. Well, I, I just wanted to pick up on your question, maybe a little bit sideways, um, <laughs> on the, on the call cooperation question. So Fortinet's a very interesting company, right? So they, they are, um, I will say honestly, a, a very good partner um, as an application vendor. They, they play it's within It's not the because rules. he's sitting next to you, is he? Not <laughs> because he's sitting next to you. But yet at the same time, they have, as a matter of corporate strategy, made a huge investment in ASIC-based um, forward yes, security. And so they, they play, as, as I've seen around the industry in lots of different accounts, with a pretty straight bat. You know, hey, listen, we can offer you this as an integrated solution, if you will, the old way, but we've invested a lot in ASIC and you know, we think there's value, but also uh, we can play as an NFV provider. Um, so I think, uh, you know, you guys are great. Thank you. <laughs> so, wow. In, in, in contrast to some others who will really try to, you know, right. hold on to the old game and right. fight for as much as they can. And can you name them? No, I'm kidding. I'd, I'd love no. to. <laughs> well, the audience probably can. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, and it's hard. It's hard to have your running business. Which, yeah. which is absolutely which is what we do and, and try to do well and enhance keep enhancing for the last decade and and also bet and go with an, another model and another uh, way of doing business uh, compared to give you the all the whole product all all set up fair so let's talk about cooperation automation we talked about cooperation APIs, right, being key to collaboration. Well, let's speak about APIs and maybe the reality of APIs. So as a service provider, right, so we'll talk to Equinix, we'll talk to Facebook, and we'll talk to Vicky. As a service provider, we say, oh, great, we're going to we're gonna cooperate, and we're going to give you the APIs you want. Um, true or not, the APIs are what you need them to be from the majority of vendors. We'll start with Vicky, and then we'll go down this way. I mean, I think we believe most vendors and, and partners and even us don't have the breadth of APIs that we really need. Right. Um, and the customization that's still required is challenging. So while everyone may publish right. their own APIs, they're all different. Yep. And they don't necessarily follow a standard that we could actually build an integrated solution to. Correct. So and I know the answer. We have a RESTful API is the answer, isn't yeah, it? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very restless uh, API. <laughs> the restless so, API. Yeah. That's what we should do. Yeah. You heard it here first, the restless API. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> yes. So, Sandeep. Yeah. True or not, automation, APIs are all that you ever need, and if not, we'll just white box them away. Uh, I'm kidding, but yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, I think it's partly true. Uh, it's, to each shop, it's to its own set of problems and optimizations thereafter. Um, if you look at the first version of automation that we rolled out to manage our fleet of networking devices, it was actually based off of CLI scraping, SNMP, and syslogs. Yep. I mean, it was great. It served the scale that we had, but it didn't when we hit the next step function of scale, right? right? At that point, we were grateful. We worked with our ecosystem. They provided us the APIs, you know, be it XML, you know, RPC mechanisms. It again took us to the next level of scale. But now where we are is where we, we are actually working with our vendors saying, hey, open up your platforms. We want your platforms. We want right. to absorb them into our DevOps environment. Yes. And it seems like at this point in time, the best way for us to do it is if we drop our software on your platforms, extend your platforms, integrate with your platforms through SDKs, on boxes, on nodes, 
that would make us a lot more effective and that will make us absorb your gear, which we really want to and effectively. You absorb the 60% margins that James was talking about too, potentially. <laughs> Maybe? Maybe. I'll, 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 I, you don't have to answer that question. <laughs> we'll go to Matt. So we're you know, just venturing into this more and more because traditionally, as I said, we've moved from this data center to this interconnection platform and launching a suite of platform services. So our first sort of venture into that is with our sort of branded you know, VNF as a service. So you've got a number of providers that are coming together, you know, right. Cisco, Juniper, our friends at Fortinet, Palo yep. Alto. So bringing that all together is, you know, it's quite a challenge. Right. Um, it wasn't got, simple, was it? It, it, it? It's not simple. It's in early days. It, it launched in June. And I think you'll, you'll hear a bit more about it at this event on Thursday. We've got a more detailed session on it. But it's the principle of collaboration is obviously there. Uh, the value of collaboration because it enables these companies to offer their services to a wider audience. But the technical side of bringing that together could be, could be smooth. It could be challenging. Stein, what do you think from your association? What do you, what do you see? Automation APIs, there, not there, will ever get there? Well, what we are seeing is that uh, the traditional uh, co-location business is uh, a little bit uh, uh, the past. So uh, we have to adapt and we have right. to uh, bring the uh, as-a-service model also uh, towards the data center and connect uh, every uh, service, every uh, um, uh, yeah, application connecting to our customers. Uh, therefore, you see that more and more is uh, uh, then automated. That's still a challenge, especially for the uh, uh, regional uh, data centers, but also for the larger parties to, to create a fully automated platform where everybody can connect it and where you on the spot can uh, choose from a, a wide variety of services. One example, for instance, uh, a great example of collaboration in the Netherlands is MBIP, the anti-DDoS cooperative. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 that is a very interesting one, but uh, many people are using it to sort of like fence off the easy attacks. Uh, that's really uh, created by the industry, so many people are, are, are part of that. But there are many customers that don't want to go for that and want to choose for one of the other anti-DDoS systems, and they want to do it on the spot, and uh, that needs an automated um, uh, system. So. So maybe, Mansoor, do you think we'll get to the point where the automation from all the vendors are ever there? Can you regulate that? <laughs> oh, we can regulate anything. <laughs> if it's useful, uh, it has to be useful, of course, but we, you know, we, we, we tend not to regulate where it's not needed. But I think, um, I think the full automation, what we're talking about, so what we're talking about here is the new interconnect. So interconnect between programs. Uh, full automation, I think, uh, as mentioned by Veronica, is probably across the board is probably still a little bit far away. Uh, I would have some security concerns if it was, if we were pushing too far on that, to be honest, because we have a big focus on the security side. I think that uh, increasing interaction into working between APIs is, is definitely going to happen. And, you know, as, as Sandeep pointed out, it doesn't need to be fully about automation. You did it pretty manually in the beginning, it worked fine, and then you build on that. I think that's where we're going. I mean, even regulators do APIs. We have an API, so we collect a lot of data from all the operators in the UK. Yep. And over the last year or so, we've opened up an API that any business in the UK can just interconnect, take the data directly, the raw data, and build it into their software. And we see a lot of, for example, rental companies and other, other uh, many, many businesses building in that data into their program. So I think that's the, the way to go is not necessarily, you know, boiling the ocean by saying it has to be all automated. Right. I think just having a, a, a pragmatic view on data models mm -hmm. and what you're happy to share, what you're happy not to share, what the data models are, and then the APIs can, can be built on top of that is, is, is a way forward, I think. Yeah, that's fair. Co cooperation through data modeling, which is still a challenge, as we can attest to something like simple, as simple as open config, for instance, where we're still trying to get beyond the simple router, right? But, mm -hmm. but anyhow, speaking of collaboration and cooperation, you know, how do you see that evolving? What are the best mecha mechanisms to make that happen? Open source, open standards, which standard bodies, you know, how do you make that happen? I'm going to pick someone. Any volunteers to start with? James? Sure, well, I'll just take a run at it. So when, when you think about our space in Edge NFE, I mean, the, the Etsy white paper certainly designed the frame, or described the framework within right. which we all play. Right. But I'd say the industry as a whole adheres to it loosely. 
Very I, loosely. I, very loosely. Yes. And I, I get into about zero conversations a year with customers to say, please describe to me your implementation of this or that interface. And it's, yes. it's not really the relevant question. So I think the standards do a, a great deal in terms of just setting, okay, this is roughly the ballpark. You're going to be players here, here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and so on. Um, but you know, really nailing all the APIs is about impossible. Right? By the time a standards group can figure it all out, it's long past when you know, people like Vicky have had to implement yeah. it. So speaking of Vicky, so can you mandate those standards? I mean, maybe not the standard, but mandate the template, mandate the APIs? to your vendors to drive the cooperation collaboration? Oh. Well, I think it's in some cases we probably could, but I could also stifle a lot of innovation if I right. do that yep. as a practice. Um, one area in particular that we're working on very diligently uh, is with the MEF, for example. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is important to us that the Interlude and Sonata interfaces get more fully defined, um, but it is challenging to get industry cooperation to write those definitions. We yep. have, I have, you know, folks on my team that, that are working on that, like Dr. Mehmet Toy, uh, but we also, um, you know, need others in the industry to contribute because it won't work if it's just, you know, right. one and then we're the only one who adopts it, right? right. So I think there are, uh, but there are enough standards bodies working on different things that as long as everyone's not working on the same thing and wasting a lot of energy, you know, we still need to come to some place where we're close and uh, we can get close enough that we can write the rest of the definitions specific to the applications or the business problems we're trying to solve. That's fair enough. So let's see, Nicola, any, any thoughts around the MEF and... A very good intro because I'm yes, leading I know. the yeah, MF88. That's what I, 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 it's all <laughs> uh, set up group, for you. This uh, uh, application you, security. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so yeah, the, and there is a whole continuum between the standards, which is agreeing on the commons. Yep. And sometimes, if if you really look at the speed of the business, is really to align the slowest. <laughs> Right. It's it's a right. not that's so fair. fair. That's fair. That's but fair. it's it's a bit like this. Yep. So like you have to be there. And usually the one in front already passed that for yeah. a long time. They usually define it. Um, um, but the, the comment about APIs uh, is really in the collaboration. It's it, it, collaboration and automation. It's the key. It's the cornerstone. Because put a product manager hat mm -hmm. on. And if you have to do a lot of customization and a lot of changes, yep. If you don't have an API, you have to do it in your product, right. yourself. Right. If you have an API, then an SI or someone, or the, the, the goal of that very specific project, 98% of the time, they, using the API, they can show the customization they want right. using the underlying things sure. they use. So that's, that's the key, because then you can really concentrate on having a very nice, good product, being the expert of your field, and the API is talking to the orchestration. Yeah, uh, when, when it works well, right? When the API is defined at the right that, level. That's, right? that's the ideal. Yeah, <laughs> that's the key, right? And the API will, you know, it's, it's kind of like the standards bodies when you, divide, when you debate, you know, Wi-Fi standards or carry Ethernet standards. You know, if you pick the API the right way, then innovation and differentiation underneath and automation and orchestration on top, right? That's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then the, the battle is that, that line. But if you forget security along the way, <laughs> you, yeah, we you will end up yes. with, uh, with the yeah. SMS issues we have today. Yeah. Fair. Well, Fair. Can't, can't be fixed. Fair. Fair. So speaking of standards bodies, we talked about the MEF. So we got MEF, we got TIP, we got ONF, we got Linux Foundation, we got, right? So too many, too few? What do you think, Sandeep? You, you guys created some of those. Yeah. Responsible at least two, yeah. OCP and TIP. So clearly, I think we were sort of hitting the the delays of the regular standardization, like protocols, RFCs. Yep. We were like, okay, let's play standardization in another dimension. And I think we are hitting the same kind of sprawls and delays now. There, yeah. I mean, we we, we started we started a few, right? We were trying to galvanize the ecosystem. We were like, it kind of worked. Yeah. It, yeah, I think it's, it's still in its um, infancy. It's very interesting to see how it will take the standardization to the new realm. Right. Uh, yeah, we've been trying to galvanize our ecosystem, right? We've been trying to open source our switch operating system. We've been trying to open source our routing stack that we call as OpenR. And uh, it's not just for branding, right? It's trying to like galvanize the ecosystem and see more standardization out there and, and create these building blocks outside right. of Facebook too. 
Uh, but you're right. Uh, we are in that infancy stage where possibly we have sprawl too. We do have sprawl. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how it'll evolve. Yeah. yeah. I mean, part of it is, you know, the open source thought, right, which is let a hundred flowers bloom or a thousand flowers or a million flowers, right? And that's great because it's supposed to be Darwinian and, you know, only the, the best will win. But I think what Vicky was saying was, the danger is that we have too many efforts going in the right. same direction, and then we end up getting diluted, which is really yeah. horrible. Right, Matt? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think I don't personally get too involved with that side of the business, but, um, you know, for us, we're looking at our whole sort of product management rollout. We've just, uh, one of our panelists who was meant to be here, uh, Justin, has just joined us from yeah. Uber. So there's a sort of, uh, you know, that, that change you will start to see. We have a whole product development team and Equinix will be developing what, you know, those edge services on top of the platforms. Which standards though? Um, all, all of the sort of open standards platforms. That's so yeah. the point, you know, what we're making here is that I think you don't want to sort of stop that innovation. No. Don't. And, the, you know, we're moving so fast that we don't necessarily know what the right route is. So use of agile development, you know, the ability to fail fast is, is very important. So you don't want to be confined by I think that's, that's fair. Speaking of, you know, moving fast and, you know, moving from, I think, Stein, you talk about, you know, you can't just be a colo anymore, right? You have to move. So what, what do you see, you know, from a standards bodies, corporation, open source? There's a lot of, so as you and your operators move on, right, and you look at OCP, TIP, ONF, LF Edge, LF Networking, um, maybe I miss a couple even, right? Well, the mess in there, right? TM Forum's in it too. TM Forum can now do open source, right? So, and Etsy does too, right, with OSM. So how do you, how do you, how do you look, how do you sort it out? Or your, your members, how do you sort it out? Well, I think that uh, traditionally uh, the data center industry has been very uh, uh, open and flexible to fit in everything uh, right. in, in, in our business model. So therefore, we have uh, created some, uh, uh, some room. But uh, what I see, I, I'm in the standards uh, uh, in the Netherlands and on the European level, uh, basically more on the data center side of things. But what we see, and uh, uh, it's still uh, at some point on the facility side, it's uh, a grown-up uh, standards uh, uh, business. Uh, uh, but on uh, IT side, you still uh, you see that that is uh, not at the same pace as the industry is. So it's always behind. And um, what we see in at this moment, uh, uh, environmental issues, that our environment and sustainability is completely not uh, into the standard committees, the working groups that, that, for IT and for networking. And that is a real okay. issue because the EU Commission, right. the whole next four years, is yep. all about uh, environment and sustainability. That's, that's fair. So. OCP needs to have a green seal on all the, all the uh, <laughs> projects, and TIP too, right, presumably, and MEF and TM Forum and the like, but what do you think, Mansour? No, I, I totally agree. I think the zero carbon networks footprint, and actually there is a lot happening, and OCP is quite heavily involved. There's a number yes, of EU-wide initiatives on lowering the uh, energy footprint, and there's going to be more and more, and the GSMA has also published yes. uh, about uh, and reducing emissions, and, and Vicky also mentioned 10% reduction, or is it 10% lower for 5G energy consumption? But I think if you look at the hardware space, there isn't a lot of uh, standardization. OCP is pretty much a case in point. I heard there was a workshop yesterday on NFVI, multi-party yep, uh, multi standardization. Yep. I think that's a really big opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think it won't cause competition concerns. I think it has benefits for everybody. And I would really, and especially in the UK, there's a public-private large-scale trials going on for indoor use, where we have a big problem with indoor, and I think NFVI platforms for indoor as standardizing those, the hardware, is a big opportunity. For the rest of it, I mean, there's a lot of mergers and acquisitions going on between standards, so they are actually condensing, yep. and recently I think ONF signed with Etsy. Uh, yeah, ONF, Etsy, CNTT. An agreement. And, and no, ONAG so. and MEF on SD. -WAN. So that's moving the right thing, but if you look at the way standards have developed, there's two things that need to change. One is it's been big blocks, 3G, 4G, 5G. But the reality is there's releases coming every year, release 15, 14. So actually they've moved to this agile development theme, but it hasn't been recognized as such. 
So I think this kind of interaction with ONF should teach the standards bodies how they can actually just restructure things to be much more agile. Um, and I think the other thing is that standardization is usually focused on the interfaces only. I don't think that's good enough as we go into the virtualized world. I think when you get more into the functions, that does cause some, fr some interaction with the actual developers of the functions, but in the NFV world, I think it's a, it's, it's a really critical point. Yeah. The one thing I would say where I'm really wary of, and this might be polemical, is uh, so if you, if you look at the concerns on security, and there are really, really important concerns, the, the three things that terrify all policymakers and security agencies, as demonstrated by the recent EU report, are virtualization, open source, and 5G. They're terrified of all this stuff, <laughs> for good or for bad. Yep. So none of this is really going to happen unless we actually sort that out. So I think there needs to be a concerted effort from the, the whole of the ecosystem to actually identify how we are, because there are ways of managing those concerns. Right. So that's really important. In particular, I think the management layer, the orchestration layer, especially the manual layer, yes. uh, there's been lots of calls to homogenize that around the world. Yes. I think that from a regulator perspective, that would be quite, we would be quite against that because we think that's one of the most dangerous areas to have a homogenized control of all the networks. So just, we need to bear in mind those issues when you, when you look at where to cooperate. Fair enough, and uh, correction, this, the CNTT efforts are the Linux Foundation and the and GSMA, but not, not the ONF, but easily, easy mistake on my part, it's too many of them, but <laughs> anyhow. Um, so at this point, actually, we're gonna make it more exciting. We're gonna open it up to the audience. Um, so, audience, we have about six, seven minutes, probably time for a couple of uh, uh, questions. Um, so think about what, you know, we have, it's very rare you have this esteemed panel of, you know, seven experts from, you know, varying parts of the industry to talk. So, questions. Yes, Dan, um, I'll just repeat your question, go ahead. Everyone salutes the flag of cooperation. There are mics in the audience. Yeah, there are. But it's okay, I'll just repeat it for the purposes of time. Yeah. Everyone salutes cooperation. Yes, Dan. Yes. Where, does, where is the dividing line between it's good to cooperate and it's not good to cooperate? Excellent. All right, so Dan Pitt um, asked the questions. Um, everyone salutes cooperation. It's a good thing to salute. Now, where is the dividing line between good cooperation and bad cooperation? <laughs> yeah, well... We were founded five years ago as an uh, association representing the data center industry. Now, 95% of the data centers in the Netherlands are part of it. And we have very strict, uh, I remember the first meeting, we, they really uh, uh, were not very happy uh, sitting in one room. And now five years ago, uh, uh, later, we, uh, from the beginning, we have defined very strict areas where we talk about and where we sh uh, uh, certain areas where we don't collaborate and that has worked tremendously because we have so many common challenges yep. but we also have things where we are competitors and we will, don't talk about. So example of a bad cooperation? Sorry? Example of those that you don't want to cooperate, well, that they've chosen not to cooperate on. Is that uh, well, it, uh, it is... Uh, the, the, the connectivity and uh, uh, ways uh, how you as markets so, or uh, how you as companies uh, 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 go to the market. Go to market. So packaging, things exactly. like that. So let's see, Mansur. So bad cooperation is something that your organization frowns upon, presumably. It's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious. I, well, I mean, I mean, to your question, really, it's quite simple that there's a difference between collaboration to increase choice and a cartel. Right. So anything that reduces competition to the point that the consumer ends up paying more or has less choice has to be bad. And that's why, I mean, I was actually, you know, I was on the board of TIP. So yes. it's absolutely true. They're very careful about this. And I think they're doing, you know, they're doing this in the right way because they're aware of the concerns. Basically, if you do common sourcing over many operators with the scope of limiting the choice and having a, a buying cartel, that's bad cooperation. Now, if you structure it in a way that you're actually increasing diversity by allowing for more vendors to come in, which I think is the scope of many of these organizations, and that's okay, but you just need to keep a, a close eye on that. That's the area we're concerned of, on. On the government perspectives, on the geopolitical perspectives, the national security perspectives, there's a new dividing line coming in, which is not about competition, it's about national security. Right. And that's an area that we're not involved in, because we're not national security, we're about network security. But that is creating another definition of what's good and bad cooperation, which many people will agree or will disagree. That is, that is significant, though, because it risks splitting, 
it risks actually splitting into this whole area of collaboration that we're getting into. That's totally different. Thank you. Matt, you look like you have something to say. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put this in the context of, of our business. I think it's about, um, you can't work with everybody, okay? So you, you need to make a choice. And ours will be about scaling our business. So, you know, how we sell our services, we have direct sales, and we're opening up more and more now what I would call channel sales, partner sales. So we need to choose the right partners. So the defining ones are the ones that can give us scale, that have good you know, penetration in those markets. So bad cooperation would be probably, you know, three or four years ago, we may be working with everybody. It's right. about slimming that down and making those choices. Otherwise, you know, if you've got the wrong partner in the wrong place, that is bad cooperation. That's what I tell my kid, make good choices, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's a good choice, Andy? Good I think, cooperation. I think yeah. every now and then we try to do something bold that definitely alienates our ecosystem partners. Temporarily. Until they cooperate. Temporarily, hopefully, <laughs> until, we, until we figure out a new cooperation, be it on the tip segment, be it yep. on, on our own OCP line. I think that's fair. When they first came out, a lot of people were up in yeah. arms. And then now everyone realizes it's, maybe it's not that bad. But I think being intentional and explaining the strategic play involved, if not anything, explaining our uh, you know, strategy in it uh, as Facebook right. is important. So hopefully we don't alienate our partners for too long and we all come around and work I think they'll again. see the light eventually. Yeah. As long as they figure out how to make more money or not. Right? <laughs> so Vicky, what do you think? Good cooperation, bad cooperation? Well, I think is there's, you know, co-opetition. Yes. Right, so there's, it, it depends, right? And I think ultimately... Um, the customer's use case often will dictate whether it's best to go, like in the Fortinet example, with a, you know, a purpose-built piece of yeah. hardware, for example, and a fully integrated stack because that fits a need uniquely than a more modular, you know, um, NFE would. So I think, you know, it, it, the answer is it depends. And so you have to start with what, what optimizes whatever the end user customer is trying to do and the solution set may have to go there. And so sometimes even for us, there is this notion of co-opetition. We cooperate, but we compete, right. but we have to do that in a way that's, you know, fair and ethical, but the, oppor the opportunity is big for all of us. Um, it's a big marketplace and ultimately the customer will decide how it needs to play out. So fair enough. So, Nicola, what do you think? I, I prefer to look at the good, the good part. Good, good collaboration, it's, it's like human relationship, is, is to have a, a, a good common goals and, and stick to it. And if, if people come with hidden agendas, they cooperate, but they try to sneak in something else or they want to defend another business, it never goes well. So we, we be very clear what what the goal of the corporation is, and usually it, it, it works much better. That's fair. James, any thoughts before I turn it over to the audience again? Uh, well, I mean, all, all cooperation is good cooperation, but I mean, I think the answer is, uh, the answer to, to Dan is Adam Smith, right? From a vendor perspective, if, if the role that is defined for us by, by Verizon or Colt or whomever says, hey, we want to buy this from you and nothing else, right. does that make sense for you as a business? Mm -hmm. we, have, we go away, we do our math, and if it works, it works, and we play, and that's right. the game we're playing in. So. Right. so I think that's fair. If the business evolves in such a way that you find yourself in this position in the ecosystem, don't, always, don't fight it, but maybe find it do, do better at it. I think that's Fortinet has done, right? In other words, because otherwise they should be trying to spread the ASICs everywhere through OCP, right? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> All right. Next question from the audience. Yes, go ahead, James. Yeah, I was going to ask him the question offline, but now you've asked it. We might as well ask him. All right, so the question for you, Mansour, is you talked about the concern about standardizing the orchestration and worrying about the implications of that. So James was wondering, um, why? Why is orchestration so bad to standardize when Vicky's dying to do it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, yeah, maybe we should Thanks, James, for the question. Um, so if you look at the concerns from governments and security agencies about these, you know, these paradigms of new paradigms of virtualization, um, 5G and open source, is about the 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 threat uh, the threat mapping that's out there of um, 
the potential damage that can be done to society. So if you look at, if you read the recent report that came out, it's very high level, but the recent report that came out from the, uh, the EU, EU with ENISA, um, it identifies orchestration and management planes as some of the most sensitive areas. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's probably true. Obviously, if you, it's not only just about stealing information, it's, uh, and if 5G is as, as successful as we'd like it to be, it's potentially about shutting down industries, shutting down infrastructure. But at the same time, if you can actually get control of the whole of the network and reconfigure it, obviously that's the danger of a programmable network that's, that's not right. secure. Yeah. So obviously, there has been a lot of initiatives around the world about coming to a common orchestration and automation platform. So ONAP is the case in point, which is becoming very popular around the world. I think it's great that there is a small number of, um, well, there is a number of orchestration and automation platforms that are adopted, just so we can actually scale up to an extent that there is that interoperability and it becomes workable. If that boils down to one or two, mm -hmm. then it's the same as, as we have in our, in our radio network supplier system where you've only got three suppliers right. on a large worldwide scale. So the danger, whether it's related to uh, national security concerns or whether it's related to, to uh, simple reliability of the, of the actual infrastructure, becomes increased. So, so over-dependency on any one supplier is a danger. I would say that over-dependency on any single automation platform is an even bigger danger in the same sense. Yeah, that's oh, right. So is that clarifying? More eggs and more baskets, safer than uh, one giant egg. We need diversity. Unless you have a huge basket. <laughs> anyway, but but that, I think that's fair. Um, so that the regulators don't always have the last word, and as they tend to do. <laughs> any other comments on that last question? We're out of time. But anyone else want to add to that? Otherwise, again, um, the regulators win. Yep. I'm kidding. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Yes, yeah, no. security on the Security. Stack. It's, yeah, I know, it always comes back to security, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, the, the threat models and, and the people uh, right. developing those stacks, uh, really the, the goal has been and still is mainly uh, speed, development, automation. Security comes last, as usual. <laughs> uh, but with that model, you can't anymore because you automate all the things. So you, you automate the threat. Right. Uh, you turn a, yeah. a normal threat into a, a catastrophe with, with automation. Um, that's fair. Uh, so that's, that's why probably the regulators and the agency are very so concerned. Plus, it's done in an area where uh, people developing the things have uh, just a little view on what the security threat modeling and all that is, because they, they've been protected so far uh, pretty heavily. Um, there is some exceptions, uh, especially coming from the standards. MEF is doing one, yep. but uh, the, the goal is really to, to define security services, so not what you protect. Yep. Uh, Etsy as a, a security group, I'm part of, yep. um, where we also try to uh, look at things, but I don't see the ecosystem or the market really uh, using those recommendations and really implementing Fair. them. So security it's very is always concerning. an afterthought. I mean, the, the fact that we have the internet today says that in security is an afterthought. But it should not be, right? It, it is, but you can't, yeah. you, in a fully automated CI CD realm, you need to move left. If you want to fix anything, Fair. you need to Fair. do it at you the beginning. You have to shift left to get more secure. No, I don't think there's any argument about that. So with that, I'd like the audience to give the um, panelists a rousing round of applause for all their time this morning. Thank you. Um, and if you enjoyed Sandeep's uh, um, you know, little contributions on the panel this morning, uh, and even if you didn't, we'll be welcoming Sandeep back <laughs> right after the break. And I, for one, will be here to listen to him um, because we always want to hear what Facebook says because they know a lot, right? So <laughs> anyhow, with that, um, we have a break now. Uh, we'll see you back here shortly, and uh, we'll welcome Sandeep. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone.